The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The Worldwide Fund for Nature South Africa, or WWFSA, will officially launch its new green premises on the corner of Mill and Dakota Streets in Bramfontein, Johannesburg next month, following the refurbishment of an existing building in January. David Oliveira has the story. The Brownfield project for the construction of the WWFSA's new Johannesburg home culminated in significant reductions in the building's energy and water consumption, as well as a significant portion of the previous building's materials being reused in the construction of the organization's Gauteng Province head office. One of the most significant green initiatives developed during the 14-month project was the installation of a closed-loop black water treatment plant, which will treat the building's sewage waste water. The treated water is reused in the building for showers, toilets and landscape irrigation, significantly reducing the amount of water used. Only potable water is supplied through municipal services. On a recent site visit to the organization's new Johannesburg home, WWFSA Water Source Areas Program Manager Dean Muraven told Engineering News more about this system. So one of our unique features about this building is that we recycle our own black water, so essentially our sewage. So we're not connected to the Johannesburg water sewage systems like all of the other buildings around us, uh, which is great for being a green building one, but then it reduces the pressure of us uh, on the national wastewater treatment system itself. So the way it works is we have a series of Jojo tanks in the basement, uh, which actually clean our own sewage. Every time we flush, it goes into there with a digester. Uh, which then separates out the sludge element to it and the water then comes back into the system. So the garden that we have around us is then watered with that treated water uh, and that grey water can then be used in terms of your, your shower water etc. We do have shower facilities here but that's essentially how it all works. So we recycle all of our, our, our water at the moment. Capacity of our building in terms of actual numbers here uh, is very small but as we grow the system uh, is able to handle that capacity and in terms of coming out and cleaning out the sludge tanks that happens only twice a year so it's really a limited impact in terms of the environment and one of the big things in terms of uh, wastewater treatment is to treat wastewater you need a significant amount of clean water to do that so when you take your house or home or any building off the grid it saves a significant amount of water meanwhile more than 80% of the waste stream created during the refurbishment project was diverted from municipal landfill and recycled through a variety of initiatives, including on-site reuse and donations to charitable organizations. The original building, except the facade, was deconstructed brick by brick, with the bricks then being reused in the construction of the new building. The building's energy consumption is significantly reduced by maintaining a balance between natural and artificial light. Light emitting diodes, or LEDs, and energy efficient T5 fluorescent lighting has been installed in the building, which are linked to occupancy and daylight sensors that dim or switch off lights if sufficient natural daylight is available within the office space. All perimeter windows of the building are fitted with automated blinds, which control the amount of direct sunlight penetrating into the workspace, reducing the glare on computer screens and thermal heat gain. The facade of WWFSA's new headquarters contains double glazed glass in the windows, which significantly improves the building's thermal insulation, further reducing energy consumption in the building. Other news making headlines this week, Minister Lynn Brown moves to stabilise ESCOM's leadership with the appointment of Brian Molefe as acting CEO. Public Enterprises Minister Lynn Brown announced that Transnet's Brian Molefe had been seconded as acting CEO of ESCOM with immediate effect. In order to stabilise the executive leadership and after consultations of various stakeholders, including President Jacob Zuma, Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa, the boards of both Transnet and ESCOM, I have decided to second Mr Brian Molefe 
as acting chief executive of ESCOM. Mr. Mulefi is the current group chief executive of Transnet, and his secondment is with immediate effect. His experience is having turned around the uh, PIC, the Public Investment Corporation, and providing stability at Transnet is a clear indication that Mr. Mulefi is no stranger in leading complex institutions. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.